Howdy partners, this is Kiram with uh, Massive Effect, MassiveEffectMarketing.com. We make your website go from this to this. Today we're taking a look at a website right here, AbbottBlackstone.com, and we're going to see what is wrong here. And there are a bunch of things which you may not realize and which even pro web designers wouldn't realize, but we see all. We are um, <laughs> omni-seeing. So first things first, we're on the homepage right here. Um, design is a little old. This navigation up here is reminiscent of the early 2000s. And it just, it's not, it's not helping. It's not augmenting anything. It looks a little old. So this navigation should get redone. These borders should be removed. Um, the logo is also a little bit, it, it's too big for this section. There's not enough negative space around this logo. So it's kind of overwhelmed. Uh, it's very busy up here and you actually won't notice this logo it's not really going to register in the mind because there's so much activity going on with this really striking image crowded up here and this big logo with no negative space around it so that should be considered additionally we have a double navigation which is never a good idea um, again i would restructure this a little bit those aren't huge points let's get into the the big stuff and the, the big thing right off the bat is the value proposition is out of, is, um, out of sight and it's misworded. We want the value proposition right up front, front and center, in my face, and um, easily read. Additionally, it's not worded correctly. They're talking about the product, whereas they need to be talking about the end result for the uh, prospect. So what solution are they solving? I mean, what problem are they solving? So we help audience X achieve desired result um, from pain point Y. You see what I'm saying? So it's a very short statement of what you're going to do for the prospect. And that lets them know they're on the right website. Because somebody lands on this initial screen, you have three to five seconds for them to make sure they're on the right website because they don't know. You know who knows where they came from? It could have been a social post, could have been a Google search, maybe an ad. You have no idea. They're not necessarily going to be fully familiar with you. So this initial screen here, it needs to do a lot of heavy lifting and really communicate, okay, we serve audience X. We're going to handle problem Y and get you to that desired result Z. So that needs to be spelled out right here, really clear. You'd probably want to fade this background image so there's enough contrast on this text because you would move the text right up here. So that's key. Another thing we need are some trust logos. They are down here at the bottom, which I see a lot of people doing, which I'm not a big fan of. All right, here's some trust logos. These need to be taken and put right here towards the bottom, okay? And it needs to be done tastefully. Good example of some tasteful over here, right? Nice and grayscale, looks great. Um, over at my favorite book funnel over here, Nuclear Effect. Very tasteful, right? Just like that. Um, th these are too big anyway, these guys. So they need to be shrunk down, they need to be grayscaled, and then uh, put as a nice little bar down here. So we'll have the big value proposition right here. We'll have the call to action underneath, bring that up. And then we'll have the trust logos right here. By the way, the call to action should be reworded from contact us to, you know, get me my desired result now or whatever. It needs to be a little more communicative and not so generic. So that'll be a great initial screen here. It's gonna do a good job of giving someone everything they need in this initial view to know who they're for, to know, I mean, who you do business with and what you can get for them and what they need to do next. So that's great. So we went over that, we'll scroll down, then we hit, you know, okay, this is about us basically, right? About us. And they've got some great data in here about the company. However, they're really missing out by not putting a face on the company. Uh, too many people don't do this, either for privacy reasons or whatever. Um, I get it, I'm not a fan, but if you want your website to perform and get those sales, the human element is key. The human element is, is one of the most overlooked elements in uh, a web design. And all you have to do is put a, a photo of a manager, supervisor, owner, founder, whoever, CEO, somebody C-level, doesn't really matter who it is as long as they are uh, 
a meaningful person in the company. <laughs> and um, example, over here, frontline guttering, bam, you know, hello from the uh, owner, right? People do business with people. So when you put your face out there, it's gonna build rapport, it's gonna build um, some trust and people will do business with you if they trust you. So let's get a picture of the person. Ideally, you also put their name and their um, post title. So let's get that rolling. Um, one thing I wanna say on the stock images here, not a really big fan Stock images, they're generic, right? And you wanna be authentic. You don't wanna be generic. That's one of the, the factors why that, that people take into consideration when they're doing business with you. It's just gonna be in your favor to use real photos and not stock photos. Now, they don't have to be bad to look authentic, but you can see stock just by looking at it. You know it's stock, right? So I would suggest swapping these out with some actual photos that would go far in building trust. Other things to talk about here, we've got some great data in this section. However, it's not very visual. And when people are scanning through the web page, they're, they're just kind of half awake. They're just kind of like, uh, and they're going to look at little pieces. But in here, there's some great selling points that are going to get skipped because people are going to scroll right through. So I would suggest this should be redesigned, a little more graphically represented. Um, you know, stuff like this, right? Little icon, heading, and then smaller description, right? So with something like this, you know, kosher certified, right? You summarize it, kosher certified, and then a little kosher certification symbol, and then you explain it, right? Another example, Okay, organic superfoods, right? So then you would do another one, organic superfoods or whatever. What you wanna do is you want to take each one of these points, shorten it down to like a three word heading and then describe it below and then put a little icon on top. It's just easier to digest. Also some key data here, all right? Um, this should be presented differently. This is a huge selling point and it, it might be missed a little bit. I would suggest doing a section like this where you're putting some of your key statistics just very clearly right up front like that. How many years in business? How many tons of goji berries have you sold, right? And then um, how many companies you've worked with. It depends on your business, what stats you can put, but whatever vital statistics you can lay out, it's gonna go a very long way in building rapport. Another example over at Life With Paint, you know, 54,000 students, 20, uh, 2,100 classes, 17 venues. Stuff like this is gonna go really far. So it's all about taking this data and presenting it a little more digestible, right? And having it have its own space and room to breathe. When it's laid out like this, it's just much easier to digest. So I would highly recommend that. We've got some pictures of their goodies. That's great. More goodies. More. And we've got trust logos at the bottom. And then the footer. There's no um, strong call to action at the end. And by that, I mean a whole section with a little form. Yeah, they've got a phone number and they've got you know, read more, but I mean at the very end, uh, a, a section devoted to, you know, requ uh, requesting information, something like that, right? That would, uh, that would be very important to increase conversions because you want to put a bucket at the end of this um, journey, so to speak, so you can collect people, in other words, right? Other things, I don't see a section here on um, reviews or testimonials. I am shocked. Now, is there something up here? Nope. Class of certifications, oh my goodness. Yep, I do not see testimonials or reviews. It's all about building trust, so there should definitely be a section for that. 
whether it's Facebook reviews or BBB or Yelp. In this case, it wouldn't be Yelp, Google, um, Trustpilot. You know, there's all sorts of these different review platforms or just a plain old testimonial. You gotta build some trust. You need some third party recognition, all right? So let's get a reviews section put up, ideally with the face of a person. Uh, reviews are much more potent if they are from real people, all right? Anyone can just throw in some text, but people usually don't, uh, you know, fake it by putting a fake photo and names. So that is good. Other points. They could really benefit from a section that handles objections. Um, you know, if, if I, let's say I have a, um, a protein bar company and I want to get all of my uh, cranberries from these blokes. So I might have some, some things on my mind, you know, what about the quality of their sourcing? How do I know that, you know, there's not arsenic in their cranberries? What's their QC process? Um, certain objections like that, right? Uh, whatever those are, there should be a section devoted to that. Over here at Life with Paint, I've got a good example of that. Not sure about painting, right? So this is for painting classes. So somebody might have some objections before they want to come and paint. Well, I've never painted before. Not sure if it's going to be fun and I don't want to leave home. So then you handle each objection, one, two, three. And this goes very far in building up trust and you know, moving people more towards taking action because you're going to handle that consideration with your little handling down here. And some may not want to do this because they don't want to talk about the negative and it feels uncomfortable, but really it's the thing to do. It shows that you're confident and it shows that um, you know, you're, you're trustworthy because not a lot of people would want to hide that kind of a thing, right? Well, let's not talk about that. You know, it doesn't paint us in a good light. You know, for instance, over here at Massive Effect, I've got some objections. You know, what's one of them? Yeah. Right? I've never heard of you. People take my money and I get no results. I don't believe anything works. Um, these, these are all really valid points, and then you can, you can handle each one. The thing is, you always handle it. You don't just put the negative. You, you also put the positive is what I'm trying to say. So they would really benefit from that a section like that over here because people will have, you know, before they want to order five tons of goji berries, you know, they, they, have, they, they want some reassurances. They want to be, um, they've got some questions on their mind, right? So take them up before they even ask them. So before they get on the phone and say, okay, well, what about X, Y, Z? Well, they've already seen it on your website. So you kind of beat them to it and that goes a long way. Um, other than that, there's definitely a, a lot more that could be done on this homepage. It's very bare bones. This is very typical for a website. You know, we've got an about section, you know, um, products, 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 logos, footer. It's truly, um, <laughs> It's not the full treatment at all. It's not even half of a treatment. It's really kind of like slapped together. And when you can see on the sections I was just describing, it really goes a long way in, in um, building interest and desire in the prospect by going over the sections I just talked about. And there's even more. That's just the beginning. There's, there's probably five more sections I would add. And it doesn't matter if it gets super deep. Like, come on down to Life of Paint. This site, you might say, oh, it's endless. Look at all these sections. And um, you could even add more to Life of Paint over here. But it doesn't matter if it's super deep. People have been trained into scrolling endlessly. So don't you worry that, okay, well, you know, right now the site's really good because look, I just, I just went through the whole thing in one second. That's not really a selling point. The selling point is the data and the full experience. You're not getting a good treatment when you, when you scroll through here. We go over with Life of Paint. Section by section, it's handling something with the person. Each section has a specific purpose with specific data, and it's all going towards an end result, all right? And it doesn't matter if it's super long and keeps going. People want to keep scrolling, so it's really not a downside at all. So uh, if you want your website to be properly done, come on down to massiveeffectmarketing.com. We can sort you out. We can do a little video. I can take a look at your site show you what's good and bad, then you can 
have some knowledge so you can then get those sales rolling, get those doll redos coming in. And um, it's really essential. Very few websites are optimized correctly on their homepage. A lot of them are just like this, you know, about us, products, services, and that's about it. Testimonial maybe if they're, if that's the usual. So it's missing a whole lot. You want to take it from attention to interest, desire, and then action. So I can help you take a look at your site and see what you're missing so you can get that going and get more conversions. So come on down, massiveeffectmarketing.com, and um, go ahead and put in the comments if you have a website, drop it in, give me the URL, and I can do a video and then get you rocking and rolling. All right, so thank you very much and take care.